Mars, circa 2075. Richard Griffin, the deputy administrator at the Ultor Mining Complex was preparing to leave the Martian colony behind him. Only a few more months and then he would be out of there. He'd served his time in the company hellhole, and he wanted to be rewarded for it. He hated everything about the colony. He thought it would be rough, but he had no idea how bad it could be. It was the smells that got to him the most. Sucking in recycled air day after day, breathing the same gases that had been breathed in and belched out by thousands of miners, mercs, scientists, and guards, he didn't even want to think about it. The scrubbers were supposed to take out the smoke, dust and bacteria, and all the other impurities. But something was still there. It smelled stale, almost like something was dead. He felt like it was slowly coating his lungs, getting harder to breathe every day. He had to get back to Earth, as soon as possible. Before he came to Mars, Griffin wondered what was so important to Ultor on the barren wasteland. Now he knew, and he wished he didn't. All that mattered to him when he was on Earth was becoming a VP before he hit 40. Now he just wanted to live to see 40. He didn't care if they busted him down to a mailroom clerk, he had to get out of there before everything hit the fan. Griffin knew that if word got out about the truth there, everyone in admin and the science labs was going to spend the rest of their lives in jail. He couldn't believe this was happening to him. Sure. He'd stepped on people on the way up, but that was what he had to do. Office politics were rough and people got hurt. If you were smart and tough, you survived. If not, you didn't. Griffin thought he couldn't lose before he came to Mars. One long string of wins for the G-man. Job hopping, department hopping, company hopping, always moving up. Ultor looked like his ticket to the gravy. A huge corp, multinational, multi-planet, great pay and perks, and lots of upward mobility. No downside in sight. From Earth, the view of Mars looked good to Griffin. No 50 layers of butt kissing, backstabbers above him. Just the administrator, with him as the number two guy on the whole planet. And all they had to do was keep some half-wit miners and egghead scientists in line. No problem. He was all over that deal. Griffin signed on, packed up, and was off planet in days. The cruise to Mars went by fast. Altor gave him a ton of paperwork to read on the trip. Production reports, budget costs, company regulations and personnel summaries. Griffin buzzed through it at first, but he started getting uneasy the more he read. Something bothered Griffin about the personnel reports. Most people wouldn't have noticed it, but he was nothing if not thorough. For one thing, no one ever seemed to leave Mars. Sure, a stray exec or two managed to return to Earth, with the company's blessing, but no miners ever left. Lots of them arrived, a few hundred a month, but none ever left and the miner population stayed about the same. Something was happening. The Ultor mines were like a roach motel for miners. They checked in, but didn't check out. Griffin was bored, so he tried to figure out what was going on. He flipped through summary reports and didn't find much. Yeah, there were the expected deaths. Mining was dangerous work, so miners died. It was the old thing about having to break some eggs to make omelets. But there just weren't enough official deaths to account for all the missing miners. Griffin expected a miner or two to die every week, but not 40 or 50. Production reports, personnel files, shit logs, all yielded to nothing. He hit something in the medical facility files though. Dozens of miners a week landed in the medfax, pulled off the shift lines for illness. None of these miners ever appeared again on the shift rolls. He didn't know what that meant then, and he was sorry that he knew what it meant now. When Griffin arrived on Mars, the first thing he did was grab the admin for a talk. Davis was a burned out shell of an old man. He looked like someone drained the marrow from his bones and then sucked his eyeballs hollow. Griffin guessed it was the mining complex that had done that to him. Altor never would have sent anyone in his condition out there. Griffin hoped he didn't end up looking like that. He told him what he'd found in the medfac reports. He just stared at Griffin with his soul dead eyes and told him to leave it alone. Well, nobody told Griffin not to solve a problem. He kept after it for a couple of weeks. He went to the medfax and tried to talk to the doctors. No go. They stonewalled him, the deputy administrator, and told him the disease was of unknown origin and details were being kept confidential to avoid causing a panic. They wouldn't even let him see any of the infected miners. They claimed the disease was highly contagious and the miners were quarantined. They wouldn't tell him where, either. After kicking some walls, Griffin zipped back to his office. He got onto the network and started digging. He didn't find much on the mysterious illness that had been offing the miners, but he did find some interesting personnel discrepancies in the science lab areas. Even taking into account that the labs ran 24 hours a day, with three shifts of scientists, there were way too many scientists. And about 30% of them were not on the duty rosters of the science labs. 
there was no record of where they worked. They had assigned apartments, and their ID card record showed they ate their meals at the designated times, but 10 or more hours of the days were completely unaccounted for. No records of where they were, or what they did there. Griffin decided it was time to see Capec, the head of Ultra Science Labs. He took an elevator down to his offices on level F2. It was a different world down there. Everyone he met looked at him as if he was some kind of insect instead of the number two guy in the whole place. The corridors and offices were totally barren. No posters, no plants, no personality at all. And there were bots all over the place. Not just the little maintenance bots either, but big, nasty looking ones that Griffin had never seen in any of his Ultra Spec manuals. It gave him the creeps. But even that didn't prepare him for KPEC. When Griffin was finally ushered into his presence, he almost puked up his lunch. He was the most hideous looking excuse for a human being that Griffin had ever met. He had implants grafted onto half of his body. It was as if he was a cyborg or something. It got worse when he started talking. His voice made Griffin's skin crawl. It was the coldest, driest voice he'd ever heard. Now he knew why the science lab seemed so cold and secretive. It was Kapek. His personality had spread throughout the place, infecting everyone and everything in it. Kapek knew that Griffin had been digging through the files and talking to the admin about all the missing miners. It seemed to amuse him. He gave a grimace that was supposed to be a smile and said he'd tell Griffin everything he wanted to know. For the next hour, as he sat in a chair and listened to him rant on, Griffin's insight slowly turned to mush. Kapek told him about the missing miners and where the extra scientists were. When he finished talking and stared at him with those evil eyes, Griffin knew exactly what Ultor was doing on Mars. And he knew what would happen to him if word ever got out. Griffin slowly walked back to his quarters that night, but had no memory of the trip. He zombied his way through the next few weeks, sure that his life was over. Nothing could keep the G-Man down for long though, and he snapped out of it. He was going to beat this thing, somehow. He wasn't going down with Kapek when this all came out. First chance he got, he was bailing out of there and spilling his guts to anyone who would listen. Griffin knew he had no future with Ultor anymore. No matter how the fiasco turned out, he needed to get out of there before all hell broke loose. No matter what, he was getting off Mars, and he would never look back.